Hello, this is another devlog for the rise of the undeath. I haven't been doing much of any work on my game to be honest for most of the time since the last devlog in October. But in January I did actually uh, move it a, a little bit forward. I have added a gun to my player and allowed them to shoot it. Uh, which I will now demonstrate. And I added this beautiful crosshair to see what is the center of the screen. But um, yeah, it kind of is on the face of the character. Anyway, so right clicking, I am spawning a projectile that goes wherever I'm looking with the camera right now. And, um, and upon a collision with the with a zombie, it kills it, making it disappear. So this doesn't look too great, it's just disappearing like this. So like one of the reasons why I haven't moved the, the game forward very much is I want to make a ragdoll effect. And it's taken me a while to mm, extend the editor to support an easier workflow for me to do that. Because if you're doing a ragdoll and you're not very precise with how you create colliders for the different body parts. It just doesn't uh, work very much. I think I should have a video somewhere handy, um, which shows like the the issue there. Um, where was that? Where was that? There was something else here. Let's see, videos. Uh, yeah, I have this. So this is what I want to get, right? Let's play it again. Yeah, this is what I want. But um, yeah, um, that's what I had. <laughs> and this is why I'm taking my time to, um, you know, <laughs> to be able to properly design this ragdoll so that it, it is more like that, I'm not sure which way I'm sh I should be like uh, positioned to the camera so that you can see it properly falling down. Anyways, um, right, so in January I added the shooting and recently I also uh, played around with some logging and stuff. So um, as we play the game, we will be able to see the logs being actually sent over into my uh, local instance here of sec. Okay, see the, the events are coming in as the the player gets hit yeah, by the zombie. So I've got here all the different details on the setup of the system, the version of the game and the stride, etc. Um, and all the, you know, events like jumping, which I see I had a break on, on, right? If you jump here in the game, you can see, come on. Um, jump, jump, where's the jump event? Yeah, there we go, jump event, yeah. So yeah, um, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Uh, and um, I kind of played around with how I want to log things in general. So you usually would like create a static instance of a global logger and log to that, uh, which I thought, ah, maybe it's too verbose, you know? So I created an extension class. Um, let me find it here. Yeah. Which has like a ton of different methods that basically are templated uh, for different number of parameters and different logging types. Um, and then in the code, let's find the game event listener system. Yeah. So here it just says this log info, and then I give it the message template and parameters and it's figuring out, okay, yeah, this is this kind of generic method. And, um, it also provides the name of the method that like you can see here, what it's very small font member name. What's the name of the method that's logging? 
uh, the line of the file which logs it. Uh, from the, this object, I'm taking the name of the class. So I don't have to specify all, uh, any of that. I'm just have, I just have a universal extension that provides me all this cool stuff. Um, yeah. Uh, and also I, <laughs> I can even like add an initial scope. Um, so I have a context provider, which uses, uh, local state for a given asynchronous thread um, or task more. Yeah. So, uh, in the global scope, we have all those things I mentioned, like the version, et cetera, et cetera. but I could have, I could create, uh, a new scope with this method and give like special parameters just for a single component, which would be running asynchronously. Uh, to to have this additional data included in every log statement within that component. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. And another thing I did is I have created uh, a, a rough any parsing system uh, for configuration. So I can bring up uh, the configuration file. Right. Basically I'm trying to leverage as much, uh, features of stride because it's a huge game engine and this isn't everything documented well, but as I read the source code, I'm learning a lot. So for example, there's a whole virtual file system and I'm leveraging that, right? So, uh, here we can see that I'm saying virtual file system application roaming, and this points it to this folder here. So sorry, uh, within this catalog, yeah, roaming. And I have a config any, which contains, uh, right. Not sure. Wait. Oh, okay. Um, interesting. So, uh, apparently like the, the way I write my, uh, data, which is a, Mm. open or create and write, it doesn't actually clean the file. So I probably will have to change this mode into something else. Uh, but anyways, so yeah, I can create like any, any setup, uh, configuration files basically, and then have the user actually, when they're playing, they say, okay, well, I want to, so for example, they have an issue, right? So I'm telling them, okay can you turn the log level on? And then for example, there will be a setting here that says log to file. And they set it, set that. And now as they play, they generate this huge log that I'm gathering here, for example, in sec locally, they're gathering this, uh, in their file, and then they can send this file to me for an an analyzing it, you know? So that's pretty dope. Um, an idea. Yeah, right. I don't have that yet, but this is something I'm definitely considering. So yeah, I can read configs. Um, pretty cool. And well, that's it for now. Um, I will give you another update once I have figured out the physics constraints so that I can make a proper ragdoll. Cheers.